Donnie, do you ever regret not being a Habs fan? No, not really. I never really saw the appeal in being a Habs fan since I wasn't raised to be a Habs fan. And you know me, I'm I'm not a front runner. I like the, I like the underdog. Why do you ask? If you were, maybe you'd let me do the entire fan reaction video for their game tonight, and I could guarantee you, I could do it under under ten seconds and be done. Stop! They're already dead. Preds lose. 2-1 Thursday night inside Bridgestone Arena to the Chicago Blackhawks. <sighs> I'm, I, I'm just speechless. What is this? This is 2023 and we're having a letdown game against the Blackhawks. This isn't 2017-2016 with the Blackhawks still in their prime just off of their three Stanley Cup championships. We're game 66 of the season. You know, I can't be angry because it's not like we're still thinking we're a playoff team. We're hoping we're a playoff team with these young, hardworking kids. And they did work their butts off in this one. But Chicago coming off the high of beating the Bruins on Tuesday night. Oh, they come into Nashville, who they still consider us an arch rival because of how they played being massively outplayed, but the Preds let them have it. The Preds were looking ahead to Saturday. What have I been saying, Preds Nation? And I hope the players would have considered this too. Don't look ahead of yourself. You're looking ahead at who you're playing on Saturday afternoon back in Bridgestone instead of concentrating on the task at hand. This is the first game between the Blackhawks and Preds to be played inside Bridgestone Arena since Patrick Kane was traded to the New York Rangers just before the NHL trade deadline. In fact, Preds Nation, if you were curious like me as to the last time the Preds and Blackhawks played a game in Nashville that didn't include Patrick Kane either being on the active Blackhawks roster or being on their injured list, the last time that happened, you have to go all the way back to January 26, 2007. Coming into this game, the Preds knew that they were four points back of the Winnipeg Jets for the final playoff spot with three games in hand. And yeah, I'll admit, even though I'm trying not to get my hopes up, I was peeking at the out of town scoreboard and in the first period, it was going the Preds way in Winnipeg as the Bruins got out to a two nothing lead, but the Preds were in a scoreless game and you thought, oh, maybe it'll come to them. Maybe it will come to them. And as the first period almost came to an end, oh, they won't get it here, but maybe they'll get it in the second period. But oh, look, before the first period was done, Preds had a chance at one end and then the puck comes the other way. Bad turnover by Dante Fabro and Lucas Reichel, who tries to get a pass over, but doesn't. It deflects off of Dante Fabro, who goes sliding into the net, taking out Yusei Sauls and the puck goes in as the net comes off and the refs call it a goal because you're allowed to do that if the puck would have gone anyways if you hadn't knocked the net off and right before the first intermission the Preds are deflated against these Blackhawks that are massively outplaying. Preds trail the Blackhawks after 1-1-0. One, one, now let me address a lineup decision that was made before this game that I know some Preds fans are disappointed in and I can understand that but there's a method to the madness sometimes so I can see both sides. Before this game was played, Igor Athanasiev was reassigned to Milwaukee and Michael McCarron was recalled. And you know what? Ultimately, I'm okay with that. Chicago's not a high-scoring team that you should be afraid of. And Igor Athanasiev right now, considering where this Preds roster is at, is more beneficial for his game, I think. And maturity going forward by getting top six consistent playing time. And I think he gets that in Milwaukee since they're still in the deep trenches of a playoff race down there. Then he would be by playing with the Preds. So even though he wasn't in the lineup, I don't think it ended up costing him because the stats showed it. Like, like let's let's get down to the grim numbers when the Preds were still trailing one nothing. They were out playing the Blackhawks. The Blackhawks were giving them chances. The Preds just weren't taking advantage of it. Look, overall, before the Blackhawks made it 2 nothing in the third period on a goal by Anderson, I think. Was it Anderson? Yeah, it was Joey Anderson eight minutes into the third period. The Preds were outplaying them. The Preds ended up outshooting them, what, 36-21? And they won more face-offs, 
the 35, like, come on, the Preds were had the chances there to take over this game at any moment. You can't take over the game when you score your only goal if the goalie pulled a 23 seconds left. And you know, whatever the Preds had left, they really showed us in the third period. So with this shot difference, I can't really fault them for falling short. It just sucks that they waited so long because look at the shot total. The Preds outshot the Blackhawks 15 to five in the third period and it could only come up with one goal. Props to Stalock for, like I said, keeping the Blackhawks in this game and pulling out the win. I just had to give it to Alex Stalock, the Blackhawks goaltender. He he stole the game. He was the story. I was going to ha probably have called this one stay locked if the Preds hadn't gotten a goal in this game. But props to the Preds for breaking the shutout. And, you know, they're not ever out of a game, it seems now. They just have to work harder to get a little bit more offense and like I said ultimately in the out-of-town scoreboard the Preds got their help the Preds got the help so if they want to try and make this a playoff race again it's there for the taking I'm not going to be disappointed if they fall short it gives me hope how much they're fighting over 80% of the season played that they're still in the hunt you know because on Saturday preferably they win in regulation in Nashville against Winnipeg but if they were to get a overtime win against the Jets that would still be okay I wouldn't be as okay with a shootout win but at least you would gain a point and you'd still have three games in hand on the Jets as for the goaltending matchup on Saturday afternoon it's obviously going to be Connor Hellebuck and you'd think it'd be Soros because it's a division rival a Western Conference team that you're chasing but Kevin Lankin is tr quite a good choice. What if you give Saros that extra rest to try and pick up the back-to-back -back with the game Sunday in New York at Madison Square Garden against the Rangers? I'd be okay with that. That doesn't mean that Lankin is going to be threatening for Saros' job, but I'm okay with the mindset either way. You guys can let me know. But if they wanted to take that chance and dress Lankinen, who's obviously rested because he hasn't played since the weekend. If they want to play Lankinen against the Jets, go right ahead. Because as it is, you know, thinking about this more, the Preds play the Sabres on Tuesday next week, and then they face the Bruins. So if they wanted to go Lankinen Saturday, Soros against the Rangers, and then play Lankinen against and out of the playoff team, Sabres on Tuesday, that'd be fine. And then they would have arrested again, Soros for the Bruins, even though I'm not holding my breath for that game because after all, they already came into Nashville and beat them 5-0. That would be an okay rotation of the goalies on the team. Not much more really to say about this game. It was a letdown, but... Less than 20% of the season left. I can't really get that upset because this team is who they are. They've admitted it because they've traded away assets and they're just going to let the kids try and see if they can pull them into a playoff spot. But if they don't, don't get too upset. Save your frustration if they don't make the right moves in the offseason, whether or not that it also includes the coach. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. As always, click a like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like it. You can find my social media by clicking on the channel name. Tell all your friends about Predemption. Rest up, Preds Nation. Have a safe, happy St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. Don't get too drunk because we need all of you who live in Nashville, all hands on deck to keep certain planes at BNA grounded on Saturday afternoon.